Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to start the new chapter. This chapter is about the angular momentum. Our study of the application of quantum mechanics to the three dimensional problems begin this, uh, with the description of the properties of angular momentum. It means when we have to understand a particle or any system in a three dimensional, we need to understand the angular momentum of the system or of a particle. In this chapter, we will first consider the orbital angular momentum, which is closely similar to the angular momentum encountered in classical mechanics. Uh, in quantum mechanics, in addition to the angular momentum, one also encounters the spin angular momentum. It means we can divide uh, the angular momentum into orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. Angular momentum is a very common concept while studying the circular motion of objects, just like the motion of electrons in atoms or molecular rotations uh, that moves under the influence of spherically symmetric or central potential Vr. Uh, here we will examine the general formalism of our orbital angular momentum, the Cartesian component of angular momentum obey the set of commutation relations. Uh, we, um, we were later on implied as a def defining the relations of for the angular momentum uh, in general term eigenvalues and eigenstates of the angular momentum originate from these uh, commutation relations which were obtained from the Cartesian component of the angular momentum. First, we discuss about the linear momentum. Linear momentum is just like P is equal to mv. This is a well-known equation. We have did this equation in basic um, classes. And similarly, you are already aware of these units of the linear momentum. This is a unit of mass and this velocity in meter per second. Orbital angular momentum can be defined in this way. Capital L is just cross product of R and T. Here R is a radius vector from this region to this point where the mass is. And P is indicating the linear momentum. Here you can see R and MV, and then we have this capital L. This is just angular momentum. And vector form L is equal to R plus P. Or RP sine theta, if theta is 90, then RP or MVR. And when Cartesian coordinate orbital angular momentum can be defined as here, L is equal to R cos P, and P is just you are already aware of this operator minus iota h bar del, and then it can be R cross del, and R is in Cartesian coordinate xi plus yj plus zk and p is equal to pxi pyj plus pzk and if you solve this and capital l here the simple mathematics ij k x y z for the position px py pz for the momentum then we have a three component for this uh, orbital angular momentum lx just solve multiplying the thing L y and L z L x is equal to this one and if you use the operator then you have L x is equal to minus iota h bar y partial over partial z minus z partial over partial y and similarly L y is equal to z p x minus x p 
z or l y is equal to one so you attach bar z partial over partial x minus x partial over partial z it's very simple just solving this determinant similarly you can also solve for the l z this is the value of l z it means we have three um, operators for angular momentum lz ly and lx similarly for the spherical coordinate angular momentum can be written as in the form of r theta and phi you are already aware you have already studied in such type of things in mathematical methods here the del is equal to partial over partial r 1 over r partial over partial theta theta and 1 over r sine uh, sin theta partial over partial over. it means rather than writing x y z in cartesian coordinate for the spherical coordinate we have r theta and phi and i think you are aware of this shape then this is the origin here is some particle here and with the z axis is making an angle theta and here is making an angle phi with this component r sine theta then you can divide into z is equal to r cos theta here just because it's a parallel to this one and then r l is equal to r cos p r p is equal to minus iota f del and if you put this del operator in term of spherical coordinate r theta phi and solve this determinant then you have because here r theta and phi is replacing the ijk and r theta uh, zero zero because they are just uh, we have this value of r here and we don't have theta and phi for this r but we have t component of this uh, del then ultimately we achieve this operator this is the angular momentum operator in term of spherical coordinate and for the you can write i it means you can convert the cartesian coordinate into the spherical coordinates then we have l is equal to lxi plus lyj plus lzk is equal to this one this is this i think the same value which we have obtained here this is the just angular momentum in term of spherical coordinates and further this l is equal to lxi plus lyj plus lzk how we can achieve lx ly and lz lx is equal to iota dot l it means lx into iota is just lx and other component will be vanish similarly we will obtain the j comp y component or j component here or the two component will vanish and here we just obtain lx is equal to iota h bar this factor ly is equal to this one and lz is equal to this one just multiply by this iota with this factor here and multiply by this j here with this l capital l then we have this factor and finally k and we multiply this k here we obtain is equal to this one and here l square is equal to lx square plus ly square and lz square these are standard equations 
you can check yourself by using just a multiple simple multiplication just here because these are the unit vector r dot r1 theta dot theta and other will be equal to zero when you multiply with this vector. and similarly l square is equal to lx square plus ly square plus l that square 